Greetings, and welcome to the digital worship service of the United Methodist Church of Estes Park. We are so glad that you have joined us wherever you are. So please know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. In addition to this recorded service, we are participating in live Zoom worship each Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. Mountain Time. If you'd like to join us for that service, please email me at pastor at epumc.org and I will send you the link. Today is Christ the King Sunday or the Reign of Christ Sunday. This is the last Sunday for the liturgical year, which means that beginning next week, we start Advent. We will be sharing in an Advent book study of Rav Reverend Adam Hamilton's new book, Incarnation. Join us on Zoom on Wednesdays, beginning December 2nd at 4 p.m. Mountain Time. The link for the book study will be sent out in an email this coming week. Please feel free to share the link with your friends, neighbors, and family members. We'd love for them to join us. If you are worshiping with us and would like to be part of our congregation, please send me an email. We would love to connect you with the various ministries of our church and welcome you to our faith community. And now let us worship the Lord together. Please join in the call to worship. In deep gratitude, we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, and gentleness are all of God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to share our gratitude in song and prayer. Please join in the opening prayer. God, Father of the poor, your son Jesus was born among us poor, humble, and dependent. Open our eyes and our hearts and our hands to honor him now as our Lord and King by welcoming him in those who are hungry and thirsty, in all who are abandoned and lonely, in refugees, in the poor and the sick. Let our love become free and spontaneous, like the tenderness you have shown us in your Son. Welcome us in the everlasting kingdom, prepared for us through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Gracious, Gracious Creator, you have given us so much, but too often we take those gifts for granted, or as something to which we are entitled. You call us to live in caring community but too often we place our wants and needs first, with those of others a distant second. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us, but we are worried that there may not be enough, and that our worry gets in the way of our sharing. For the times when we mistreat and misuse your gifts, for all the times we assume that we get what we have by ourselves, Forgive us and lead us back to the path of wisdom.
God is a gracious giver. God is gracious in forgiveness. God calls us to new patterns and new life. We are a forgiven people. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now is the time in our service when we would receive our morning offering. We invite you to um, use one of the giving options that are available on the screen and hear these words. What are we about here at the Estes Park United Methodist Church? Jesus has told us what he is all about, and that is compassion. That will be the final word. When all things come to fulfillment, compassion. In our ministry here at Estes Park UMC, we see Jesus in every person, and we seek to serve their needs. That is why we bring our gifts this morning. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Let us pray. God, we thank you for the gifts that are given to this church. We pray that these gifts, along with the gifts of our time and our talent, would be received and blessed and multiplied for the furtherance of your kingdom in our world. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Alongside Babylon's streams, there we sat down, crying because we remembered Zion. Sing to us a song about Zion, they said. But how could we possibly sing the Lord's song on foreign soil? How could we possibly sing? This is to be a season of thanksgiving, Many of us may find that difficult. There has been so much loss this year, so much fear, so much pain. Brown and black bodies violated, dismissed, killed. Uniformed bodies killed while trying to protect, infected while trying to heal. Over 200,000 dead. Fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, neighbors. How could we possibly sing or give thanks? I believe the divine heart can hold both grief and joy. So the human heart must be able to hold both lament and thanksgiving. In this prayerful moment, Picture holding a single autumn leaf. Attend to it wholly. Place within this leaf the identity of all the loss this year. A loved one lost. Name them. An opportunity now no more. Name it. Any grief or loss you carry at this moment, whisper it, speak it, lift it to the Lord. Can you see it in the leaf? This leaf was once green with life, connected to the whole, receiving life, giving life in return. This leaf was once a blessing, a treasure, something in which to give thanks to God. Picture that leaf again, now green, whole. Give thanks for the blessing that was, that the season of life is now over, even prematurely so, does not negate the gift that has been. Name the loved one and give thanks. Whisper the opportunity, trusting new doors will open, and give thanks. Name what you grieve, and give thanks for what has been, trusting that a new season of life will come again. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. The God of Israel, whose presence was felt in the temple, traveled also to Babylon, the land of captivity, 
And when the season of lament was passed into a season of memory, God brought God's people home. Give thanks and pray. As we close, let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. And please, use the name of God and language that is most comfortable to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Today's lesson is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a, separate, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at, the, at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And was it, when was it that you were sick or in prison and we visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are cursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us join our hearts together in an attitude of prayer. God, as we have heard your word read and now we'll hear it proclaimed, help each of us to hear the message you intend for us this day. Amen. Our text from today, for today, comes right after the text from last week about the parable of the bag of gold. This chapter, chapter 25 of Matthew, and this is our last week in Matthew for a while, as we'll be switching to a new liturgical year next Sunday, and it features the Gospel of Mark. But in this chapter 25 of Matthew, there are three parables that Jesus told concerning the kingdom of heaven. The first parable he told was the parable of the ten virgins, then the bags of gold, and today we have the parable of the sheep and the goats. I imagine the setting of these parables was something like this. The disciples had asked Jesus, what's it going to be like at the end of the age? And Jesus said, I will tell you some stories. It will be like this. For this parable, he said, there will be a king up in heaven. And the people of earth will gather around the king. And the king will divide the people into the sheep and the goats. 
Now, if you were a disciple in those days, you understood this metaphor immediately. At night, when the shepherds came down from the hills into the valleys, they would divide the sheep into a sheep pen and the goats into the goat pen. The disciples understood this and it was familiar to them. Jesus continued. He said, the sheep will be on my right and the king will say to them, come into my great party. I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was imprisoned and you visited me. And the sheep will say, who, me? When did I ever do those things for you? And the king will reply, whenever you did these things for the neediest people, you did it for me. And then we know this story very well. The goats will be separated to the left. And the king will say to them, depart from me. Some texts say, depart from me into eternal damnation. Because all those things that the sheep did, you failed to do. And they're going to say, who, me? Lord, if I only knew, I would have known it was you, I would have treated you differently. If I only had known your true identity, it would have made all the difference, Lord. If, if only we had known that it was your face behind the face of the refugees. If only we had known that it was your body in the hospital. If we had only known that it was you who was starving in Africa. If we had known it was you, it would have made all the difference. And the Lord says to them, depart from me. I, I don't know about you all, but this parable leaves me a bit uneasy. I, I believe it was Mark Twain who first said, it is not those parts of the Bible that I do not understand that bother me. It's, it is the parts of the Bible that I do understand that bother me the most. Let me say that again. It is not those parts of the Bible that I do not understand that bother me. It is the parts of the Bible that I do understand that bother me the most. If, if we truly understand what this parable is saying, I think we should all be bothered. You see, the, the real lesson of this parable today is an invitation. It's an invitation for you and me to seek God. To seek God when and where God is found. Now it's easy here in Estes Park to find God in the beauty of the sunset, the sunrise, the obvious places like Rocky Mountain National Park, the beautiful mountains that surround us, it's easy then to conclude that there is a God. I believe the real lesson of this parable is to teach us to seek God where and when God is to be found. And God is to be found hiding behind the faces and places of suffering people. It was a very, very cold, windy, and wet day on the streets of Colorado Springs in February of 2019. The Chinook winds were blowing off Pikes Peak and it was just one of the most miserable days that I've ever experienced and it was totally miserable to be doing anything outdoors. I hadn't planned to be outdoors much that day but as usual, things did not turn out like I had planned. I hadn't worn a heavy coat because I wasn't going to be outside much. I just had on a fleece jacket. 
But then we received word where I was working that there was a large group of people who were living in recreational vehicles parked on a large abandoned downtown city block who were out of food, propane, and gasoline. We referred to them as the nearly homeless, as these <clears throat> dilapidated and horrible RVs were the last step that they had before the streets. Did I mention that it was a Friday and there would be nowhere for them to get help over the weekend? Since all of our staff were tied up with other projects that day, I set out in the agency's big truck, loaded up with boxes of food. Another staff member went with me for this outreach effort. We spent the entire day outdoors in the elements, knocking on the doors of these old and horrible dilapidated RVs, giving them food, talking with folks, arranging for propane for heating and gasoline for the few of those many RVs that would actually run. And at the end of the day, I'm not sure if I have ever been that cold, wet, worn out, and overwhelmed by the horrific living conditions we observed that day. When we were done and we got back in the truck, my hair was frozen. I couldn't feel my toes. And I was just done. I was just plain done. I was done physically, I was done emotionally, and I was done spiritually. As we were driving the truck back to the agency, we stopped at a stoplight. And I looked down the street and to the right, I saw what looked like a body crumpled in the gutter, face down. No, I screamed to myself. No, I just couldn't deal with any more cold, wind, and another person in desperate need. As I sat there at the traffic light, shivering from being so cold, I told myself that I had done enough that day for those experiencing homelessness. No, I wasn't going to stop. I was tired. For heaven's sakes, my hair was frozen. God couldn't expect me to stop and help this person, could God? I admit that I looked at my coworker to see if she had seen what I had seen. From the look on her face, I knew she had, and I knew she was struggling with the same thing. The light turned green. As we approached the spot, I drove on by. We hadn't driven more than half a block when I was thoroughly convicted by God of my sin. I did a U-turn in the middle of the city street and we went back and we got out of the truck and into the elements again and discovered that it was indeed a person in the gutter. It was Victoria, an elderly woman we knew well. She had fallen and had been there in the gutter face down for over two hours. She was unable to get up on her own. We were able to get her up and out of the elements and get her some help and shelter. I think of Victoria often and wonder what has become of her. I wonder if hers was the face of Christ that I saw that day. It would be so, wouldn't it? And for some reason, I was moved to help, not of my own doing, but of God's doing. The reminder today in our passage is pretty straightforward, it seems to me. We will encounter Jesus in the least of these. The hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, those in prison, 
those in dilapidated RVs, and those in the gutter. You see, our faith is not just a faith of mind and heart, but it has to involve our hands and feet as well. We live our faith by what we do. We live it in what we do in places that aren't always pretty or warm or pleasant. And I don't offer that story now to congratulate myself because I really did so little and I was such an unwilling participant. I offer it only as a reminder that we don't know when such opportunities will present themselves, the opportunity to see the face of Christ in another. I offer that story as a way to begin to wonder what it means to see the face of Christ and respond. So I want to end with a couple of questions for all of us. I want us to ponder on these questions as we move into Thanksgiving week. I wonder, where have you seen the face of Jesus this week? Where might you see Jesus today? Where will you look for Jesus tomorrow? What difference would it make if we saw the face of Christ in all who have need? What difference would that make for us as individuals? What difference would that make for us as families? What difference would that make for us as a congregation, as a community, as a nation, and a world? I wonder. Let us pray. God, be with us in this week to come. Be with us as we, we are thankful and grateful God, help us to find your face in the faces of those who are in the most need. Help us, God, not to ask questions of worthiness or questions of how they got to this situation, which are questions that your son never asked. Help us, God, to see your face in the least of these. Amen. forth in peace, called to look for Christ's face in each person we meet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's a wrap, friends. Very good. Thank you. We need to do